my gosh, I am so excited for today's big art quest number 14 how to make skin tones. I am flesh tone, skin tones, all those tones that color a people, people color. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi guys, how you doing? He is the Sherpa Tracker. He's gonna follow my craziness around on several cameras, which are better lit today. I hope somebody can tell. <laughs> and he's going to kind of be you guys. So if you need to see something closer, if you wanna ask something, you run that through him. This is originally a live broadcast, but if you're here on the replay, man, hang in because I'm about to unlock it for you. I'm about to make skin tones possible. This particular quest, this particular event is really for if you're a very new painter and you want to start painting some people and you want to start painting some skin tones and it just seems impossible. I'm going to make it so simple and so easy and you're all going to walk out of here like being able to handle like flesh tones. And, and then beyond that, John, you ready for the beyond that? I'm not. So here's what I would like to have. After today's quest, you guys are going to be able to go out and watch any other tutorial and digest and take in all the awesomeness that is out there on YouTube and really understand what everybody's talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That yeah, makes you sense. You guys are going to be blowing up. It's going to be amazing. I'm pretty excited about it. You excited about it? Are they excited about it? Uh, yeah, yes. There's <laughs> very excitement about it. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I love it when I make something that people feel is really hard, really, really easy. It's like my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Like I live for that. You will notice in the description below yes. is a whole big list of paint. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also is a book. Here is the book. I'm going to hold up the book. You've seen me talk about this book before. Yes. This is the book. I love Walter Foster. I grew up with this company. And here's why this company is good. Okay. Because it's, it's going to surprise everybody. Walter Foster came up when there was a renaissance in the United States about people learning to paint and people teaching themselves to paint. Mm -hmm. And so these books are always geared towards that. They're simple language. They're direct. They're not pretentious. You can find them. Um, this one is on Amazon. I have a link below. Mm -hmm. But you can find stuff from Walter Foster in garage sales. Yeah, your paintings might look a little vintage. <laughs> But they still awesome. And who are we answering into anyway, right? Right. Right? I'm not living in a gated community. And if you are living in a gated community, they're all answering to you. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> you don't have to worry about it either. <laughs> so that book, definitely, if it's in your budget, please get it. If it's not in your budget and you're out and you see the garage sale for 50 cents, grab it. Mm -hmm. Like however you can bring it into your life. But regardless, we're going to cover the basics today. And I'm going to try to do that thing, um, that time code thingy. Oh, yeah? Post. You know the one that says, so if we're talking a light skin mix, uh, oh, you know, yeah, different gonna... skin mixes, I'm going to try to, like, get it through. Okay. Yeah. If you're coming on the replay, please don't skip. Right? I know we want everything, like, quick, 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 quick. But then you're not going to know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely do the whole thing. And then the time codes are so you can go back and refresh mm -hmm. easily. Yeah. All right, so you're seeing some portraits here, aren't we? Oh, yeah, well, there's a lot of portraits there. There's a lot of portraits. So we're going to talk about this. We said got this one here, and we have the Moanas. Um, I've got a Sherpa self-portrait. Where, where do I need to stand? Here? Right there. It's where you're going to be. I don't know. I'm moving all over you're the place. Where, okay, so here's my Sherpa self-portrait. Here's kind of another Sherpa self-portrait. And here is a really sort of fantasy face that I did. Yeah. Okay, so one thing that we're going to notice about all of these, right, is that... On her skin tones, they're really unusual, aren't they? Yeah. Right? You can steer all around her, kind of look around. Wait, I can, you want me to zoom in on her? Yeah, and you can kind of look around okay. at all the different colors that are going on on her. There's a lot of purples. Yeah, none of which are skin tones. <laughs> oh, yeah. She has the feeling of having skin tones. And she has that essence, but she doesn't actually really have that going on. Right. Right? And then I'm going to do my weird little Sherpa face up here. Okay. My Sherpa portrait. This is, I painted this, the, the beginning of me being on YouTube. I wanted to do something to mark how I felt about my journey. Yeah. So this somehow tells that story. <laughs> I don't really know what snails and mushrooms <laughs> and I think uh, bird's nest. I think that's when Angela and I were becoming friends. Yeah. And then I got my little heart hands with the sun in there. So clearly this is a little narrative of me talking to myself about how I'm feeling about... Like your mushroom guys. Yeah, I love my little snails. My little hands. I love my hands. 
All right, we're going to we're gonna switch off that. It's a little. So, but you'll notice again, because of the environment, I, I wanted to make myself seem of the environment. I used a lot of really unintuitive skin tones. Yeah. Right? Like you do. Like you do. <laughs> like you do. And I'll get my Moana girls here. So this is watercolor and acrylic. Oh, yeah. Right? Now, that's a time lapse that we did. So I could show you how different watercolor and acrylics look. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's what it is. Here's where everybody's messing up on skin tones. You ready? I'm gonna break it down. Break it down. Super simple. Everybody's painting skin tones like they try to do their makeup. And everything that makes you good at makeup messes you up in painting. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. On skin tones. You'll get some good contouring. <laughs> like if you really rocked your makeup, you'll contouring because what you're always trying to do in makeup is even out the skin tone. Yeah. You're trying to perfect the skin. If you go into painting trying to perfect the skin, your stuff is gonna look weird really weird and mm -hmm. isn't going to resonate as real and the more realistic you want your skin tones to feel mm -hmm. the less even the less singular tonal you're going to want them to be so we're an all naturally just trying to even it out flatten it out smooth it out we don't want blotchiness we don't want discoloration except that you do except that you do it's like so fascinating but you really do you want stuff to be happening in your skin tone. Yeah, Aaron's like, it would look like porcelain. Y it gets to. Yeah. That's what happens. I'm going to pull this out. So there's this, this is a flesh tint. Yep. Right? Looks like nobody but a mannequin <laughs> that I know. <laughs> right? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Throw that out. <laughs> Unless you're painting a mannequin. If you're doing mannequin repair, I highly recommend this. Mm -hmm. Right? But for the purposes of making skin tones... You're not going to want to do that. Also, I want you to start really looking at people. <laughs> it gets a little uncomfortable. I know sometimes <laughs> they stare back at me, right? And as we talk about these recipes, I want you to imagine in your head what's their recipe. I think one of the coolest things about being an artist is that you stop seeing all that stuff that I think that breaks us all up from each other and you just start seeing the color mixes. Yeah. You really do. You're just like, wow. There's a lot of umber and ultramarine in that skin. You know, it's it's really strange. I remember you telling me how you would stand in the post office line and imagine how you would paint things. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's like it, it really is funny since we've been working. You know, I see things differently. Do you, do you stand in the post office line and imagine how you paint it? Well, I don't. No. Do you? No. Do you guys? I do. I Maybe a little bit. Yeah, if I'm in a long, long line, I'm working. I may look like I'm flatlined, but I'm working. The Sherpa gears are turning. So, <laughs> so in skin tones, there's no normal. There's no regular, right? There's sort of like regionally you'll know that in Caucasian tones, you might be working certain paint colors. Mm -hmm. And there's no gospel there. In, in, in Asian and Indian tones, you'll be working certain colors. In Africanized tones, you'll be working certain colors. Mm -hmm. At first, when you're painting... You guys are doing self-portraiture, which means you're going to paint your own skin tones. Right. Right? You're going to be working your family. You're going to be working the stuff you see around you. Though I highly recommend that as you go, kind of kind of break that up. Kind of yeah. have some fun. So your mini quest today is going to be to, in the comments below, mm -hmm. write what you think your skin tone formula is. Ooh. That's Ooh, a good one. Isn't that a good one? I was like, I was like up at oh, night thinking about it. Because like, everybody do has their own formula for their own good skin. And that way everyone can learn all of them. That's a really yes. good idea. You know what I did? What'd you do? I got entirely ready and then left the canvas I need over there. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna Why? Go, I'm going to go your canvas. Every quest. But you have to make Why? up. You have to make up. I have to put out some paint. Anyways. No, I'm going to make you make up a song and sing and do a dance for happy birthday to Chelsea. For Chelsea? For Chelsea. How old is Chelsea? Uh, She's... I, I think that she's a regular brush. A regular brush? Okay, because I don't want to say... <laughs> like, oh, well, Chelsea, well, happy birthday, do you? What I mean is, is, is as, as I've seen her around here, okay. so I don't I don't think that she's a little, little brush. You get, you get she, what... You know what? Aren't you happy it's not a singing show? Because you wouldn't learn to sing at all. <laughs> We're so glad this isn't a singing show, but happy birthday, Chelsea. We're so glad it's your birthday and you're with us today. Aren't you glad I don't teach singing because, hey, nobody would be able to do it at all at the end of it. No, 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 no. The little cave is behind you. 
But thank you for the big canvases, which I'll need tomorrow. Actually, I think it's wonderful. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to all of the shirt beds and brushes and hardest and light keepers that we have out there. Whenever you're watching this video, this is a little birthday magic for you. Well, John opens the canvas of unopenableness. It's use the scissors. It's just, so we're using canvas board. If you haven't used canvas board, what you might notice is that it's absolutely impossible to get past the barrier, the force field. <laughs> you need like photon torpedoes. <laughs> Okay. I had to resort to multiple stabbing instruments to get it to open. So I'm just going to be sitting here just showing you these mixes, right, that we're doing. And so we're going to start out with the basic mix. Okay. Which is yellow ochre, right? Mm-hmm. Now this is what I call my quick and dirty mix. I do this a lot on the show. Okay. Okay. Um, you can preferably use CAD light, but you can use CAD medium. Yeah. If that's, what is that tube of paint? I bet that's it. It's brown. <laughs> They're Can all around. Can you some paint? No, no, no. I'm I'll good. make you do another song and dance. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. They're, they're like, don't. They're like, don't make well, her sing don't again. Don't forget things. Don't make her sing again. She's so <laughs> bad it. at it. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> you know what? I don't sing because I'm good at it. I sing because I'm happy in heart. <laughs> you know, I keep telling people that. So this is Cad Light. It tends to be a little bit more towards the orange to the yellow, but CAD red medium will work too, All right? So what your first mix is, is you're just taking the CAD over to the yellow ochre, right? It's cadmium, it's cadmium red? Red light on this one, but you could use cadmium red medium. Okay. In this book, in our color res mixing recipes book, it's gonna ask for CAD light. Okay. But you do eventually get into CAD mediums, and then I can add some white to it. See? I can add some, like, getting some mixes here. See how I'm getting these different little kind of skin tones? Yeah. All right, little skin tones. As I'm painting along, it takes very little pigment to impact your white. And that's your just basic recipe. Yeah. So when you're painting a face, right, mm -hmm. you're painting a f like a tonal study. Do you remember tonal studies? I do. So when I did... Do, 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 this, if you if you guys think of the Grisai quest, I went and did an umber study under this. Oh, yeah, that's right. Right? And then I just did glazes and I built up and that's how I did that. And that's how I was able to do these crazy skin tones. <laughs> right? You essentially are just looking for the highest highlights and the diva shadows. And you're looking to see are the skin tones warm and are the skin tones cool. But you're really just painting gray. You think you're mixing skin tones here. I know you do. Now, over there on your colors, real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, we have white, cadmium, ye cadmium red, red light. light, and yellow ochre? Yep. Okay, yellow ochre. That's the third one. We just want to make sure. Yeah, no, that's totally fine. Yes, okay. that's totally it. And you can do medium in this, and you can do the light. You know, I either will get you to the beginning, because really, your skin tones, right, are going to be kind of a peachy orange, and then you're going to be lightening or darkening them. Then the next thing that you're always doing in your skin tones is you're graying. You're like, wait, what? Yeah, right? Think about it. Your makeup person will be like, you have blue undertone. Mm. Right? You must buy my $120 bottle of magic because you're blue. <laughs> <laughs> then I do. I don't know if you do. I don't actually spend $120 on makeup. But they, <laughs> they're always like, because I'm blue. And I am. I, might, I have a little bit. So these are the two graying colors. So what I have here in grain colors that I like to use, and this is pretty much for all my skin tones, is either ultramarine blue or viridian green. Ah. So if I were to sit there and want to make a shadow, right, I wouldn't add black. That would gray out my skin, right? I would come over here and I would add a little of the green. And that would be actually what gave me my shadow. Interesting. Yep. So I would be avoiding, <laughs> avoiding, right, putting black into my skin. And you're like, but wait, what if I'm very, very dark skin? Guess what? Not going to be using black either. I'm going to be using blue, burnt umber, and sienna. Because think about the skin that you see. It's not on the surface. It's deep. Right? Everyone likes to say skin deep. Well, skin is deep. If you paint a bunch of skin, you're going to be like, it's deep. And it glows, and it has color that comes out from the inside. 
and there's these tones and there's warmth. It conveys, if you don't feel well, people go gray. If you're sad, you get red around the face. It tells a big story. It's your largest organ and it tells a big story about how you are. And as a painter, it helps us tell a big story about whatever's happening on our canvas. I know that's very high level, but even as a new beginning painter, that's what you are. You're, you're telling a story. You're sharing your story and you have a right to. You're a creative being that has a right to share your story. And in your story, skin tells a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Right? So if I were to say do a basic mix, right? Mm -hmm. You know, of a darker skin tone, I might actually put out, and you're going to be surprised, I'm going to put out some cat orange. You're like, what? Yeah. Lots and lots of wonderfulness. Get your burnt sienna out, man. All right. Get your burnt sienna out. Right? Get your burnt sienna out. If you, if you want to know somebody knows how to paint skin tones, if you're looking online and you're trying to decide, is this a person that really knows it? Look at their palette. If they have a very colorful palette, mm -hmm. these people actually do portraits. Nice. Right? So if you're like just trying to decide, am I going to watch this whole video? Uh -huh. If there's like four colors of some flesh tone, find somebody that, whether in watercolor, whether in oil, whether in acrylic, has a very diverse palette. And that would be a skin tone workshop. So, you know, I can take my burnt sienna over to my burnt umber and grab a little of my ultramarine blue and look at this. Mm -hmm. This instantly, instantly starts to really darken and really take on life. And I can add even a little orange to it. And I can start getting all kinds of beautiful, right, maybe a little burnt sienna in there. Look at those tones. I'm going to make you swing over to the other side so I can use RoboCam yeah. to zoom in. Okay, there we go. Zoom in, right? But if what if I was trying to lighten it, right? I would go into the yellow ochre to lighten it. Look at that. I got that camera a little bright today. You know, you could go into cad yellow if you're trying to say that there's sun happening. Get it. All right, there it goes. Right, you're trying to say that there's sun, some sun happening. Right? So we're just talking about what colors might we see on somebody when we're looking at their skin. These are colors that we might be getting into. Right? But if I wanted to paint, you know, their friend, who's very, very fair, I might come over here to the make my bay skin color, right, which is the cad red light and the yellow ochre. Mm -hmm. And then I could add a little white. And it's, sometimes it's nice to add a little yellow. Got too much paint on my brush. This will be one of the biggest things that messes with you on skin tones mm -hmm. is too much pigment on your brush. Right? So I can come here. Look at that nice flesh tone. Oh, yeah. That's very fair. It's very light. Because I hand mixed it, guess what it's not? What's that? I'm going to show you what it's not. Even? Even. <laughs> In this case, oh, gosh, that's such a dead color. And I love this. This is a good company, but I'm just saying it's a dead color. I'm going to put this right next to here. To me, that's a very dead color. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want that color. I want a color that feels like there's circulation happening. Yeah, you can. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw it like, I'm gonna blow your minds here. I'm gonna pull out ni ni the the nickel and the Naples yellow, good yellows, All right? And pull out the Naples yellow. This is a cool yellow, and I'm gonna mix a little white into it. So I'm gonna make a mix of one white, one Naples, and then I pull it into my skin color. And then I have the sun hitting the skin beautifully. That's where I would put sun hitting the skin. So if there was sunlight on fair skin, I wouldn't just keep adding white. I would add a little Naples yellow to white into my skin mix. Interesting. If I wanted to say that we were sitting in a cool shadow, 
I might come in with my Viridian Green and come into my basic mix, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to say this is the shadow, maybe in the ear. Actually, ears are always uh, warm shadows, and then under the nose is a cool shadow. Right? Mm -hmm. Come in and get this mix here. And we're just blending this mix. We're just saying people's skin tones are varied. They're not direct or simple. Yeah. When you're using a book like this, and I love this book, it's going to give you base recipes. It's going to tell you things that you need to know. It's going to explain to you about your planes on your faces. And it's going to give you a reference. And so if you can get it, please do. You're going to notice right away there's a whole bunch of Caucasian recipes. And then there's a whole bunch of Eurasian recipes. And then mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of Asian recipes. East Indian, Olive, Native American, I'm not kidding, Middle Eastern, Latino, and then uh, Black Warm Dark and Black Warm Light. And there's, yeah, Black Cool Dark and Black Cool Light. Hmm. Now, in that, you literally will still have to custom mix because we are not mass produced in a factory. No. No, we eat different foods and we live different lives and we get different amount of sunlights and we have different body temperatures and, you know, sometimes we're happy or sometimes we don't feel good. So even in all of this information, the joy of painting people is, is that there's no real formula. There's no gospel. There's sort of a guide mm -hmm. that can get you into it. Right. Yeah. But you still got to work it out. <laughs> yeah. So if I was to sit there and say, and I really love this, you know, um, cool light. I love this. The cool light, black, cool light, dark skin tones. So we get back into this, right? Mm -hmm. And I would even, now this is, you can use titanium white, but I would actually even add unbleached titanium to my mix. If I could. Because mm -hmm. I don't want... Anything that isn't isn't warm. I don't want anything that isn't rich, because what you what you don't want to do is make it um, ashy. Right. Right. You want to make sure that what you're painting feels warm, alive. You know, I hate to say it, but you got to put dreams in there. <laughs> you need to add the dreams. So your first mix is just a one to one burnt umber and burnt sienna. Right. That's your first mix. And then as you add white, and see, you can see why I like the off-white a little bit. I have to say, I think that the idea of everyone sharing up their own yes. mix is brilliant because I'm seeing everyone put up their cultural background. And it is some wonderful, wonderful, like, melting pot mixing happening up in here. And I think if we would just back up as a species and just be like, what's your color mix? <laughs> <laughs> and just, I mean, I know I get a little Gene Roddenberry in my worldview. <laughs> but it does seem, you know what I mean? When you're an artist and you're looking at people, this is what you're really seeing. It's, it's very nice. To be able to do this. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm always going to want to add some ultramarine in here to create shadows. Always, always, always. Love it, love it, love it. Mm -hmm. Love it, love it, love it. Isn't that fun? Oh, yeah. So you got your highlights, and then if I'm going to want to create... Um, something just a little little brighter I'm gonna take my Naples yellow over to my my white the off-white there get into my mix and there's a little Sun mm -hmm. hitting the skin oh, yeah. but maybe it's very warm and so you want to get into the orange you your skins should be very very colorful yeah. Right? This is what should be going on when you're mixing skin tones. Everything you're like thinking. Now, here's another thing I want to say to you when you're doing skin tones. If you can print out your picture in black and white, 
get your tonal map. But on top of that, look at what's happening here. This being red, some of my favorite portrait artists mm -hmm. will over exaggerate the red around the nose and eyes and lips. Mm. Right? And it creates, it, what it conveys to the brain is a strong feeling of emotional connection. Yeah. All right, I'm going to pick another recipe here. Do they have undead skin tones in there? Um, do you want to do an undead? Do <laughs> you want zombie skin? It was just a, well, it was no, just a no, no, no. So if I'm doing zombie skin, right? Yeah. I'm going to definitely, definitely have to pull out some blue and some orange. And I'm going to start getting into contrast, very hardcore. Mm. Right. So let me let me pull out the base skin recipe and get some little red into that. We're going to we're going to get it. It's pretty rough though. You guys ready? So my zombie skin base, right? Is uh -huh. a little cad and a little ultramarine blue. Now I'm going to add a little of my white to that. I want it to be a little bluer than anything. Because we don't have oh, circulation. Yeah. I don't have any circulation going on. And I might pull in a little green to that. And I'm painting that. Mm -hmm. Now, get some just of your yellow on the brush. You don't even have to take it out. And creating your highlights there. Get some of your titanium white. And when you're doing underpaintings... For Wait, no, we're still painting zombies. Lots going on in zombies. <laughs> I'm helping Mark out here. Okay. When you're through that, yeah. I don't have it out, but I would get into my quinacridone. Yep. I would. I would get into my quinacridone. I would get into my crimson, which for some reason I don't have out here. And I would start pulling those red in, even though you wouldn't have circulation... Uh, do I have one accessible to me? What's that? A quinacridone or a crimson. Either. A quin uh, yeah. I thought I pulled it out, but I don't see it. I don't see my crimson or my quinacridone. I have my cad red medium. Which you can see is very different than cad light. Well, if I didn't have my quinacridone, I would still come into here. And on my zombie, you know, around the eyes... Yeah, I would I would be pulling in these sort of red tones, but I would let them. What are you doing? You're pulling me weird way. Oh. I would still want to um, pull in this sort of. This is when if you're doing vampires, if you're doing undead, if you're doing fantasy paintings, the Quinn I like better is the red because it has an unnatural feel about it. Right. And you, and you don't want it to feel natural and go ahead and let it gray out into your colors. Right? But you would hit your eyes and nose. Oh, there it is. See how that just doesn't feel right? Yeah. Just take it in those spaces. Work that palette. And you're still just mixing... Um, <laughs> John's adjusting things. You're still just mixing uh, color tones. Yeah. Right? You're still just mixing recipes. So... You know, I did get the <laughs> crimson... They're asking me to say Passamaquoddy pink. Passamaquoddy pink. They think that it's funny. I need the alizarin crimson. Where, Where is it? What is what is going on with what me today? What are you today? looking for? What color? All right, so I'm gonna do um, like a, a, a Latina. Okay. Um, skin tone, but if you could find the alizarin, that would be really helpful. Alizarin crimson. Or okay. just any crimson from the big box. Okay. Anything that says crimson will help. So crimson, the reason we're looking for crimson is it's a blue red, it's a cool red. So in skin tones, you're working warm colors or cool colors. That's another thing when you're looking to say, can, does somebody have a workshop I want to attend? Does somebody have some explanation of skin tones I want to do? Look and see if they're talking about the warm colors or cool colors of skin tones, right? John's going to look at that. So basically, I'm going to be like, I'm going to pull out my yellow, right? I'm going to, I think I'm going to grab my cad yellow and... And I'm going to get some of my um, yellow ochre. Thank you so much. Um, what is Okay, that one. <laughs> Just any of those, right? I'm going to pull that out. And I'm going to get some of my orange. I'm going to pull that in there. 
and I'm going to get some burnt sienna. And now we're starting to get some values that are warm and rich. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're talking your Naples yellow, your burnt sienna, your cad orange. They're going to get you your base tone. There's a base tone. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, yeah. Right? That's our beautiful base tone. You can pull more burnt into it if you need to. Burnt sienna. That's totally cool. Right? Pull in. Start darkening that tone. You can get your white in Naples. Right? And mix a highlight there. This is a lighter tone. You know, if you want to hit some nice orange in there, get some warmth going. Right? And if I were trying to sit there and add some warm red in the under cheek, I might, for this, get my CAD red light. Ah. And be like, work that, because it's a warm red. So, like, I'm trying to warm up the cheek or lip or nose. Okay, so what I'm taking away from this is that there's a lot of color, a lot of shades and tones in this. Yeah, skin. I could just all day. I could just this all is a lot. day. Yeah. Right. Right. This is you so know? that th you know, everybody agrees that book. Oh. What if you were a Shaw on Sunset? What if you were Reza? What What if you were Reza? What if you were Reza and you felt like painting? Hi, Reza. <laughs> Hi, Reza, <laughs> for showing up for no reason. Okay, so... <laughs> Reza ain't here, but let's pretend Reza were here. Okay. <laughs> if Reza wanted to paint himself, right, what would he do? What would he use, right? Okay. He would pull out a little bit of white, uh -huh. and he would want a little yellow ochre, right? Uh -huh. Definitely want some burnt sienna. And he would work from this color mixture. And on the this is the rare occasion you would do this, and I don't have any out. He would have black, but we'll use yeah. um, blue. Okay. Okay. He could actually use black. Hmm. That's that one space that you could actually use black. Interesting. Yeah. Now, what's the name of this book again? Because lots of people are asking. Dude, you need this book. You need this book. Color Mixing Recipes, published by Walter Foster. It's not expensive. It's not pretentious. It's incredibly simple. And here's, here's something I love about it. I'm, I just don't mean to be, do a book review, right? But this even gets into watercolors, by the way. Yeah. If you just needed some watercolors. It also covers how to do eyes correctly. Oh, nice. Look at that. Huh. What's so you what? could get eye colors correct. Um, what would you this do? is how you do hair tones. Hair just messes with people. Well, a lot of people are asking about the book. We'll do a we'll do a little review on this book. Uh, what if you needed too. cool gray? Yeah. Right. It this covers it. This covers what should be going on around the nose. This is in the description below. You know, wherever you can find them, I just find them as a wonderful resource. They cover for oils and watercolors and mm -hmm. acrylics, and I, I, it's just nice to have a book that just gives you the information in a simple, direct way. Yeah, you use that book a lot. I do because I'm not gonna. I'm not a portrait artist. Portrait artists will have a lot of these recipes. Just they'll have custom recipes. They just know them, and they know the recipes. Um, and, and again, when you're looking at skin tones, you're looking at making. Um, you know, using a yellow, using a red, and using a lightener, right? And a brown, a orange. There's just basic colors that you're gonna see come up again and again and again because you're really going, you know. Like, if, if I do my basement with the, say, uh, CAD um, medium, right, mm -hmm. and, my, and, my, and my ochre, right, I need a little more ochre, you know, and then I'm adding a little, you always got to wipe it off. Pigment is your, not your friend, <laughs> <laughs> right? And there, there you go. There's my quick and dirty. Nice. Quick and dirty. And then I'm like, oh, I need a little yellow in there to lighten things up. Look at that. Just going through the skin tones, and you can just have a a blast. And I might grab some blue on the backside here and try to create a shadow for under the nose. Pulling some 
you just keep pulling in these colors and you're really just doing a tonal study and the truth is you don't have to do portraits in correct colors but this is if you were just trying to do that mm -hmm. so your goal is don't make an even skin tone like makeup right yeah don't make an even skin tone like makeup i gotta finish doing rosa's skin by the way oh, okay Sorry. Um, it's okay. Finish, no. finish. I just forgot. You got it. Because we covered zombie. We, and we got to finish this. So finish. You said a little bit of black would be okay here, but you're using blue. Yeah, a little bit of black would be okay and ideal here, but right. I am using blue. And I'm going to mix stronger to the burnt sienna on this. And I'm going to put in just a tone, a smidge, a smidge, a speck of that blue. There we go. So there would be my kind of base. See that? Oh, yeah. Right? And then maybe get more into my yellow ochre. A little bit. Get more into my white. Now, if Reza wanted to add some color in there to his cheeks, he would definitely, definitely want to be in the cads. Either the oranges. See? Right there. Mm -hmm. Running a little color. An undertone of color to the skin there. It's hot and he's got a flush. Because you know, Rez is running around causing trouble, <laughs> being funny with his hot chocolatey croissant. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hot buttery croissant. <laughs> the girl, I just was like on his team when he was defending her right to eat that croissant. <laughs> As like Reza fan forever. <laughs> Love the stash. And see now if Reza wanted to paint his fabulous and famous mustache, does anyone know who Reza is or is it just me? He could do that from that book. <laughs> just saying. Who is not painting with us? There's a, you get lots of thumbs up in the channel, so Okay, so there you go. Look at all these different, 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 different skin tones. When you're painting children. Yes. A lot more pink. Yeah. Kids have just a lot more. The capillaries are closer to the surface. They're, they're more flushed all the time. They're more colorful all the time. They're usually running around and out of breath. You know, so this whole area is going to be just a little warmer than if you paint an adult. Yeah. Right? Oh, and What about freckles? Freckles. Oh, I love freckles. So freckles is generally how I generally get freckles done. If I was going to freckle this skin here, right, which is the base skin tone. Okay. If I take over and make my base skin tone, if I can do that again. Woohoo, there I am going, making my best base skin tone. Add a little Naples to it and a little white, right? But if I wanted to do a freckle, I would probably get into my burnt, see, in, in that basic skin tone. Mm hmm. And then I would add just a smidge, a speck of the blue. Get a much smaller brush if I have one of my details. Detail, detail, detail. And I would come in here very lightly. Freckle my skin. Oh, yeah. Little freckles. Little freckles. And gr and don't have them all be the same, same anything. Boy, gray it, move it, change it out, because freckles are not uniform. They're a hot mess. So make sure that you're not hitting everything with the exact same freckleage. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Change up your freckles. So, just, uh, We're just freckling right there. Ethel is curious. <laughs> there you go, some freckles. Is this yeah. helping? Hopefully, this is helping. This yeah, is my goal. this is very, totally this is helpful, very helpful. Totally. Um, so Ethel was Ethel was curious. Uh, does the book cover surreal portrait skin tones, or do you have suggestions if you want to do surreal on how to? Yeah. So like in up, if it's okay if I put the girl back up because she's definitely yeah. not based on on reality. She's looking for a home. If anybody wants her. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. She is. She needs to find somewhere else to live. Um, All right. <laughs> All right. So here we go. All right. I'm going to go over the ca other camera. So in this picture, right, I wanted to create an otherworldly sense, a sense of it not being really in our space. Yeah. And so I was really working my contrast colors. I was working yellow and purple as my basis. 
So I worked a lot of purple and a lot of um, oxide, red oxide, through her skin to get this crazy effect. Yeah. Right? So when you're looking through here and all of that, and what I'll say is whenever you're trying to tell a story that's not based in reality, just pay attention to, like, she's got this little highlight here, and she's these highlight shadow planes here, right? And we know there's some light hitting her neck. Just pay attention to where those lights and darks are, and then you can pretty much mess with this as much as you want to. Um, there's an artist, Carol Marine. Right. M-A-R-I-N-E. Love her. Die for her. She doesn't necessarily paint in traditional tones. She, she watches her values. But she kind of is like whatever's on the brush. As long as it's that value, she's going to hit her stuff. And it's Interesting. really gorgeous. I love her. <laughs> love. Finger. Love. Love. <laughs> Anyways. Now she's going to be freaked out by me. <laughs> she's going to be like, unfriend. <laughs> But no, I really do because she's really brave. She's just like, she knows this is her, she's figured out her grayscale and she's just like, whatever's on the brush. Huh. You know, and then it's this really colorful, vibrant thing. So when you're trying to do this, think about, is this a cool color story? Is it warm? Are you telling something that's very stressed out? Or are you telling something that's, you know, very uplifting and try to think about what those colors are? Um, generally, the surrealists are really fairly decent at light theory. They're huh. really good at their light. Where's the light coming from in this made-up universe? And they sort of play with those things. They'll play with how shadows land. So they'll paint it right, but they'll paint it just wrong enough that you're like, ah, no, I'm looking at something weird, but I do not know why. Right. So that would be my best advice if you're trying to get into that surreal thing. Because you can always take it far into fantasy. You can always push it really far. But when you're doing surreal work, um, try to keep it almost right and a little bit off. Um, if you haven't seen her, Agnes Cecile on YouTube. Has everyone seen her? Uh, yes. So Agnes Cecile on YouTube. I have, I have seen Agnes. You have seen her? Yes. So she's a very good example of an artist that walks that line. Right? Mm. And really observe. Now that you've seen this, you can be like, you could really observe how she paints that painting. Mm -hmm. Where she chooses to put these intense spots of color. And how her doing that creates an otherworldly transcendent experience for you when you're watching it. Mm. Mm. I know. Big words, but totally true. You'll be like, oh my gosh, it really is otherworldly and transcending. <laughs> <laughs> She's so good. <laughs> but she is. And, oh, she has workshops. <laughs> yeah. I think they're in Germany. So I haven't, I haven't gone. Um, but, you know, just now you're going to be able to observe other people. Like, if you go from here and you're observing other people... Mm -hmm. right doing um portraits you're going to be like you're going to be getting why they're grabbing a green or a purple or they're you know, like oh they're graying it out oh they're creating a cool shadow oh they're trying to warm it up because this figure is sitting on the caribbean near the beach right right i don't want to paint somebody on a bunch of cool tones if they're sitting in the caribbean on the beach i have to be able to warm that up and if they have a cool skin tone i have to figure out how to play that cool skin tone against the warmth that is surrounding them because things are reflecting up from the beach and stuff is coming down from the sun, mm. right? But if I had somebody like, if, if, if I was painting somebody in the rain, right? In right. the dark yeah. on their war pony, even if they had warm <laughs> skin tones, right? On their war pony. Their war pony. It's not a war horse. It's a pony. Um, but it, even if the skin tones were warm, I still have to contend with the fact that the environment is very cool. But now that when you're looking at this, now that you understand what we're talking about and why we wouldn't use flesh tint, even if we were adding, you know, even if we were adding highlights and lists, you want unevenness to what you're painting. You do mm -hmm. want your stuff to be painterly. Um, and, and, it, and if you want it to have that feeling of hyperrealism, like when you watch a hyperrealist work, we've got a couple of them on YouTube. Yeah. You're going to see them even though it looks like they painted perfection, there's a bunch of imperfection in those layers hmm. that are coming together to create a symphony of telling you a story. And even if you're a beginner, you can start to tell these stories. You can play with it. I mean, we're not answering to people here. Yeah. 
right? That's yeah. why it's a quest. It's not a class. We're not getting graded. We don't have to show up. You know? <laughs> so you, you, we the get risk, badges. Huh? We get badges. We get badges. Yeah, the risk level for you is very, very low. And it's just what I can tell you is, is that nobody comes into this getting how skin tone is done. Yeah, everybody's got to go through some workshop or class or experience where somebody's like, yeah, you need some of this yellow ochre and this cad light and a little titanium and some Naples yellow. And that's maybe your best skin tone. But maybe they're saying to you, no, you need a little burnt umber and a burnt sienna and an ultramarine blue and a cat orange and a white. Right? You need somebody to explain to you. Otherwise, you're just sitting there going, I don't know. Am I? What color am I? I you're just looking in the crayon box going, um, the, oh, William Kemp has a really cool um, class, which you will now totally get. Now you go hit William Kemp, you're going to be like, Poosh, I got it. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's my goal for you is just to explain the foundation. That sort of like I, when I was at Next Up, I had the best time ever, but I did feel like the like in the camera class, like I had signed up for 103 when I needed 101. <laughs> 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 You were in the combined 103 203 class. Ooh, it was intense. And I really, really needed 101. But I think in art and life, we really need a 101. And then when we see some stuff, then we can be like, oh, I get it. But if you ask people to go forward without that foundation, where are they? Mm hmm. Right? Now, of course, I'm going to do some recaps of stuff. I mean, we're going to start trying to do some quick quests. Oh, yeah, quick quests. Quick quests are going to be, and I'm saying this at the end so people don't just skip through and quick quest. Because <laughs> it won't benefit them. But they're going to be little recaps. Yeah. So I'll recap, like, four skin tones and a quick quest. So you yeah. can recap. Just in case you don't come into the book, just in case you live a place that the book does not exist. Right. Right. So I just want you to think about where you live and, and look at your skin and go, is, is my skin very warm? Mm -hmm. Even if the sun's not shining on it, is my skin very warm? Is my skin very cool? In what ways are my skin uneven? Look at your wrist a little bit. Mm -hmm. And see how there's this red here. Look at all this red yes. happening here. But over here it gets blue. Right? Look at where the shadow is and the veining is and how it comes down here. And all that green paint. And all that green paint. And then and then the this gets a little yellow though, though doesn't it? It does. Just look at it. Interesting. Just look at it. Walk up to people and be looking at their skin. They're going to be like, what's your deal? <laughs> but you're learning. And that's what you've got to do. Grab your kids. Look at how their skin is different than yours. Look at how on the tips of your fingers, you're going to watch Agnes Cecile and I'm going to explain something to you. Look on the tips of my fingers how red they are. Yeah. Right? Being able to extend that, to, to exaggerate that story, lets me tell some very intense things. So if I'm oh. painting a zombie better believe I'm going to red the heck out oh, of yeah. these fingertips. And then around here, I'm going to add, I'm going to black and gray it out just at the tip. Like the flesh has gone necrotic. Oh, yeah. Right? Around the eyes, I'm going to get real weird with my quinacridone. Mm. Right? In the eye area. But then I'm going to come back and I'm going to get it necrotic. Interesting. Right, with my graying colors. And same thing all around the skin. And I'm going to make sure that there's areas in the skin that are just a little too green. Now, what if you wanted to make it sort of hyper-realistic or, or sort of glowy? A glowy zombie? Well, not a zombie at all. Let's say you wanted <laughs> to like, have... That would be hard to understand. <laughs> That's know... a master-level painting. I'm the healthiest zombie you've ever seen. Let's... I'm live. Let's go to... Live yeah. more. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the opposite Sorry. end of the spectrum and go to, like, say, to Elvin, who would have a luminous skin. Well, you know, you're looking at, like, really, when you're, it's really hard to paint beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, at the next step, and I was looking at the really beautiful people. Jasmine Rose is there, too. There's some really beautiful people there, Tracy. There's some pretty people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, I'm so glad I'm not having to paint you. <laughs> All the even skin tones that yeah, smoothly just, brush over. Yeah, this. before they put on any makeup, it's like, man, I would have to, I'd have to hustle. I'd have to lie a little bit about them. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're trying to know how to paint it, observe your children. Right. Right? So if you're trying to paint an immortal that is more full of life than they should be, and you're painting an elven, observe your children's skin tones. Practice painting some two-year-olds. 
with that bright translucent skin their skins tend to be very translucent they tend to be like rosy on the next level through here there's a whole bunch of things happening that tell us that they're at the beginning of their life journey oh yeah right and so be observant i mean even though you guys are new artists just be like just see if you can pick out those moments you know when you're going through this book it's telling you it tells you some very basic stuff and i can tell you here like um i like this very much and i can say something about it real quick what can you say um about noses so um you know it's got this here and and how when you're painting somebody you've got to make sure there's something happening at the lip uh -huh. you want to make sure that the ear and the nose are flushed gotcha and if they're not, you're telling another story. Oh, yeah. Right? So that recipe is, like, just for the base lip recipe, is three yellow ochre, two cad red, one speck alizarin crimson. And the shadow is generally burnt umber or an ultramarine. Interesting. Added into that basic thing. So you would shadow here, right? And then you'd have a highlight. You would hit that with a little Naples. Oh. Yeah. Right. But then, you know, you might get in there and I'll get into stuff like purples or I'll get into some weird stuff. Like when I got into her lips, I get into some weird colors. So Kim was reminding me that you had a something to vote on in the iCard. I did. What is that? So in the iCard, if you look in the iCard, totally forgot. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> so I'm can't go to next stuff and I'm still not doing my YouTube job. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. So so while we're here, you should like, comment, subscribe and share. <laughs> Let's learn to do this Let's, job. Look, frankly. We'll even throw some branding up. Look, we've got it. Look, dun, 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 branding. <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube trying to do a thing here yeah I'm just kind of like I'm going to be pu putting up in, as we go on the quest questions about like where what's what's hard for you guys is it the fear right is uh -huh. it the budget is that like when you're going through art there are like there are barriers to your right to creativity I have a good friend who really was able to improve a lot of stuff in her life and she really got into painting but she kind of let go all of the creative things uh huh that were sustaining her and she's really sort of fallen in a hole mm. and you know don't do that no don't because if you're oh, being yeah. creative you can hear yourself enough to make good decisions about mm. whatever you need yes right that's why i don't get really hard lined on you need exactly this because i don't really know a lot of different people here need a lot of different things but you probably do if you can just quiet the world enough to hear yourself yeah. So, um, so there's fear. Is that blocking you from painting? Is it, is it budget? Is it time? What are the things that stand in the way of your creativity? And that'll help us, you know, maybe come up with some better videos, some, some quests and some things that are real specific to your guys' needs. Cause that's what we're going to be constantly doing. Like the more you tell us what's going on in your lives, the things you're doing, the stuff that gets between you and your creativity, the better, more directed, videos we can make to help facilitate your journey yes does it make sense i never know if i'm making sense <laughs> i never make sense so no, i don't you even always try. make sense do we like the skin tone how i do i'm gonna you know, i'm saving those i feel like many people were represented here except that <laughs> that was that was the man well mannequins were represented too mannequins were represented too mannequins were represented too works works don't mm. paint mannequins but well, you can paint mannequins and even if you're painting crafty or in a journal it's fun stuff to experiment with um, everybody remembers that fabulous portrait that Dee Dee Willingham did of me. Oh yeah, that's that you, have on, you have it on your Facebook page. I have it on my Facebook it's page. It's awesome. Dee Dee Willingham. If you look up Dee Dee, the art Sherpa, you'll pull up her video. I'll try to remember to I card it. Yeah. It's 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 not short because she's actually showing you how in pencil you make a face. Look at the layers. It's really good. Look at the layers. Really spot on. She did some really spot on portraiture. Some really good work out there. That you guys can observe and yep. go, oh, did you go green? Now you're not going to be like, why did they go get green? Now you know. On the layers, there was a question earlier that I, I, I had missed. Oh, I'd love to get it. So on, when doing portraits in acrylic, mm -hmm. what, when doing an under, underpainting, what is important to prepare the underpainting for the portrait? Is it? Value. Okay, values. Value. That's the most important thing in your portrait is as you're putting in the underpainting, if you can find the four values, the four basic values and block those in. So like these highlights, the midtones and the shadow, if you can find your four basic values when you're blocking those in, mm. even if you're doing it in umber, even if you're doing it as a sienna, even if you're doing it as a grayscale, 
um, it will help you find your way through the portrait. Gotcha. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It's the map. Because what you're constantly doing is trying to map your way through. Yeah. Right? What, watch Didi. She's, she's finding her values. Now, she does it a little more like off the hip because she's very experienced in what she's doing. Mm -hmm. So, and she's doing it in pencil. So, you're, you're going to see her light go from the lightest and add darker and darker and darker. If you were doing watercolors, that's what you would be doing. If I do a watercolor and I'm looking to do a portrait, right? I think I've got two of these here. I'm looking for my lightest values and then I'm darkening and darkening as I go. Right? Yep. In acrylic, I I don't have to, I'm not constrained to those issues at all. <laughs> <laughs> not really constrained to any issues because once it dries, I can just add some more paint to it. And yeah. it's probably opaque unless it's a glaze. So chances are I can keep adding layers till I find my way through the painting. If you watch the Moana time lapse, the, the acrylic painting is ugly, 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 and then it's real pretty. Yeah. But the acrylic, the watercolor painting is like kind of pretty, kind of pretty, kind of, oh, it's just developing. Yeah, it just gets, it goes, it goes from, oh, that's nice to, oh, that's really pretty. Yeah. It doesn't really have an ugly phase. No. Watercolors don't really have an ugly phase unless you mess up. <laughs> <laughs> then they just have an oops. But acrylics are definitely a, like a swan yeah. before it molts. It's just, oof. You're just sitting there painting along going, why? And then it comes together and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember why. Oh, yeah. Because this is fine. <laughs> it works out. So that's just something you need to know when you're doing portraits. It's not the same for each medium. And, you know, well, I have to say for all of those who have their paintings at home at that ugly stage, you know, where they're giving up on it because it's mid, mid ugly duckling. Now they can go back to it with maybe a little more confidence to know that it's just that undercoating. Yeah, it should be really darn ugly to about the last 20, 15% of the painting. Yeah. It's all those little details that bring it together. We question your reality. It's totally. And I've talked to a bunch of other acrylic artists. We all discussed this. I question my reality. Now, if you're doing a Donna Dewberry one-stroke painting, maybe not. Right? Because that's a technique heavy painting, and that's sort of a layering craft folk art painting. Yep. Might not do it. But if you're just painting painting, yeah. Expect ugly for a bit. Mm. And then be just like, because you just got to hang in. Yeah, acrylic painting is like being a Fremen warrior. <laughs> You're here on Dune, and we're training the faithful. That's what's going on here. You've got to be on that painting for a while going, I don't see any water. <laughs> These giant sandworms trying to eat me. Dry brush, dry Some brush. Some of you are really getting this. This is like clarifying. You're like, it's my gum jabar. <laughs> Other of you are going, did any, does she know what she's talking there about? There are people. They know what they're talking about totally. <laughs> So that's what you're that's what you're kind of looking through is you're just trying to to persevere long enough for it to work out. Uh -huh. And you can you, you know and you'll find it, you'll see it, you'll find your way through. It's just part of the, it's just part of that journey. Yeah. So quest is put your skin tone recipes that you think is you. Yep. And in the thing below. So we've added um, if you really want to know people, you can ask them what their favorite animal and color is and now you can determine their skin tone recipe and we're starting to get to know each other in a real way. Yeah. Ooh, we like what are you guys. we up to? <laughs> what? We, we like the we like everybody here with us. Yes. Dang. I'm so happy we have all our lovely community with us. I'm um, gonna say thank you to all of our moderators. But we are gonna be adding the quick quests oh, yeah. um in the next I hopefully we'll get those starting to spin up in a month or so. If you're on www.theartsherpa.com, you will be seeing them before anyone on YouTube. We will you get them secret early. Links. Secret link. Early. Honestly, we just got to test them by you guys to make sure they don't suck. <laughs> <laughs> you may see all kinds of things early to mm -hmm. be like, oh, guys, what were you thinking? Or like, yes, 20 more of that. <laughs> and vote in the iCard. Vote in the iCard. Let us know what your journey's like. And I'm going to, we might see you tomorrow for something surprise special. Yes, we there will. It might be a special surprise. I'm sure we will. We'll, we always yeah, do Yeah, I, I have crazy. to do something tomorrow because I'm, I'm behind on unboxings. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be seeing me in a big way. And then, uh, of course, Saturday. Yeah. But I, I'm working at the time because Honey's in EcoBots. Yeah, we'll get it worked out. Which she told us last minute. <laughs> Got kids? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We love you guys. Love you guys. Bye-bye.